Hello everyone, welcome to my channel today. I'm Tara with Pieces of Tara Artistry. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I am going to be doing, this is a little bit longer video. Uh, it is a very large bloom. And um, I actually do two and spoiler alert, the first one dies, sorry. Um, but I just, I, I, I actually wasn't even going to show you the first one, but I feel like there's a lot of learning experiences in this first one uh, that I wanted to share with you. So first of all, um, I am doing, this is a 24 by 36, and one of the things immediately that I noticed that I did wrong, and I noticed it right here when I start blowing out, is that I didn't have enough pillow paint down. So what I did on this is I put my paint down and then I kind of spread it over the canvas uh, to try and get it off the edges so that I made sure that uh, when I blew out the blooms that they would extend out far enough. But what I didn't do and what I probably should have done was once I extended all that paint out to the edges, I should have poured some more in the middle where I'm doing my blooms because when I'm blowing and they just aren't, they aren't wanting to move the cell activator, see there in the middle, there's not enough pillow for it to move. So that was a little bit frustrating. Um, and another thing that I'm not a super fan of that I wished I hadn't done is that gold cell activator. It just, with this combo, I just wasn't in love with it. And I wished that I hadn't added it in. So you'll see in the next one that I do remove that from the mix here. Um, but Basically, yeah, you see how just it's just not really moving very well. Um, and I just was, ugh, it was very frustrating. Uh, it it would have, okay, so this still worked and it was beautiful. And I have to say, and I know you guys are out there are going to just be annoyed with me that I ended up scraping. Um, actually, I didn't scrape this. I just tilted off the paint to a thin layer and then I um, I just went right over it. But it, yeah, it. there were several parts of it. Once it was already stretched that I was not a fan of. So you just see that in the middle of the one I just blew out where all that gold is, there just wasn't enough pillow paint to spread out that cell activator. And so it just really didn't, it wasn't really working great. So I had to take my diverter off or my diffuser and puff down on that center to get more cells to pop up. And I actually, I thought this was ended up being pretty cool when I did all these blooms. There are five blooms all together that I do blow out. And then I will spin it. Um, and yeah, it, <laughs> there were a few places that I was not happy with and and this is a big one and I've never done this big of a bloom before so I wasn't exactly sure how much paint I was gonna need what I was gonna need to do I did get my palette knife out and I did kind of a, a scoop and drag uh, in these areas where there was kind of it was kind of weird there in the middle and I didn't want the attention to be drawn there and I wanted to kind of get rid of some of these like major white spots there. So that's why I was kind of taking my palette knife and dipping it and pulling it out. It's just pulling some of that white out. So yeah, then I spin. Okay, so the spinner, I have to tell you, is amazing. It is from Jessica Winterstrom, uh, Winterstrom Art. I will leave her uh, website in the description box, but 
this spinner that I'm using can handle, I think, a three, three foot by four foot canvas. This is a two foot by three foot canvas, and it's very easily spinning and has no trouble at all. Um, I found, I was because I was tilting so much and spinning, I was having a rough time, and my table isn't very big, so I was kind of trying to keep the paint on the table as well so so I it was a little bit clumsy with this spinner but not because it was a spinner so it's you know apparator error so yeah um while we're kind of waiting for me to spin this and tilt it um, before I show you when I parts I didn't like I am going to just quick let you know that I will be teaching this technique at the Fluid Art Experience in Seattle, Washington, April 27th through 29th, 2023. Uh, so I, if you want to go on uh, www.fluidartexperience.com, you can get tickets, see what classes are available. Uh, lots of artists that uh, will be teaching there so go check that out I'm super excited again to be a part of this and um, it's gonna be a good time uh, I've never been to Seattle so I'm actually really excited that it's in Seattle this time um, it might do a little bit of sightseeing while I'm there so I'm excited about that too but yeah that is um, coming up all it is on sale uh, the tickets are on sale right now through fluidartexperience.com. Um, we're going to have Sarah Taylor, Gina DeLuca, Massey Art Studio, uh, Garrick Brown Art, uh, Winterstrom Art, um, Cole's Color I think will be there again this time, um, Canela Sirocco, myself, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Oh, uh, guest artist will be Britt Clayton. Um, she's going to be doing a class, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, myself, and I think that's it. I sure hope I'm not, oh, Kaz Creations, cannot forget our, our sweet Kathleen. So, I think that's pretty much everybody. So you see, okay, so here is where I didn't like. There is a huge black spot of cell activator and then that center section where I used my palette knife to stretch it out. My eye just kept going straight there and it was very frustrating. Oh man, I just, I kept looking at it like, how can I save this one? How can I save it? And to me, it just was not salvageable. Those parts were bothering me so, so much. So I decided instead of doing five blooms, I would just do three blooms because now this paint, this underneath paint is already starting to dry. So with this house paint, you have to work pretty quickly with it. And when you're working on a smaller canvas, that's not very not a difficult thing to do. But when you're working on these large canvases and you're pouring the paint and you're stretching it out and then you're blowing out the blooms and you're trying to figure out where to go and then, you know, all of that takes time. And during that time, the paint is already starting to dry. So I decided that I was just gonna do the three blooms here through the center and then stretch it out. I did take it off my spinner because I realized I was gonna do more stretching and tilting than I was going to be doing of spinning on this one. So it just was easier for me, for me to manipulate the canvas when it was off the spinner than it was on, when it was on the spinner. So I did take it off and you can kind of see a little bit better um, when I'm when the camera's pulled back. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, my table isn't very large, and I uh, it, trying to get a good camera angle when you have such a big canvas is always kind of a <laughs> a difficult thing to do. So. I'm always trying to work on my camera angles and figure out a better way to do things. And I don't know. I don't know if it's any better or if it's just, 
an effort and futility. I don't know. <laughs> so, all right. So here I am. I'm blowing out these blooms. I'm trying to be very cautious of how hard I'm blowing and trying not to blow down into that pillow, which very easily can happen. Uh, especially when you're using one of these diverters, you can kind of get into that pillow easily. Um, so you got to be careful. I think that I've been using the PPG Multi Pro straight from the can lately. And I have noticed that I have had some thinner batches lately. And I don't know if anybody out there is using the PPG Multi Pro also and has had the same thing happen. But I've been noticing that it's a thinner batch and so I'm digging into my pillow much easier when I'm blowing out than I have in the past. So, um, and it is cold in my studio right now, so it shouldn't be as thin as it is, um, but I've been noticing that it's thin and I've been noticing that the centers of my blooms have been kind of going a little bit like melty. Um, and I think that also is due to a thinner pillow. So what I've done to try and rectify that, which I didn't do for this painting, and it ended up being fine, but um, I have let my PBG Multi Pro sit open for a day to see if I can thicken it up a little bit to see if that's part of the problem. Um, but yeah, if anybody else has had issues with this, let me know, um, just so that I know that it's not just me, um, or maybe it is just me. <laughs> it could just be me, but yeah. Um, so, uh, here I'm just trying to blow out these edges, trying to get some of these, um, when you get that lacing, I always like to try and blow out that lacing on the edges because I really love those lines that it creates. So here is my three blooms. Uh, I found that there was kind of a big blobby white area there, so I stuck my finger in, but you have to be super patient and kind of peel it away so that you don't end up with uh, your paint sticking to your finger and then uh, like slingshotting back uh, into your paint and making more white line situations. So, all right, here I am stretching. Okay, so this is on, I think, like four times speeded up, um, but I didn't want this video to be like, I think it was, I don't know, like 45 minutes long, but I decided I would speed the whole thing up so that you guys would be able to see the first one as well. Um, so, but you have to be very patient when you're tilting these out. Um, it looks like I'm tilting really fast, but I definitely am not. It is a very slow tilt situation. Um, I try to be really patient, uh, try not to wonk my cells out too much, which I don't really care too much about wonky cells. Uh, these days, uh, as I used to feel when I would do blooms, um, yeah, it doesn't bother me to have wonky uh, cells. But yeah, I but I do try to still tilt slowly because I want to make sure that I get the composition that I want. I don't to tilt off too much in one direction and then not have enough paint to get going in the other direction if I want to uh, move my composition. Uh, or if I need to get paint off and uh, I don't have enough uh, paint in one area to make my composition look nice. So uh, I kind of err on the side of having a little too much paint versus not enough paint on my canvases. So I'm sorry about this camera angle. Uh, it's not great. <laughs> and uh, as I'm trying to work with this one, it is hard to keep the whole canvas in view uh, while I'm doing it. But as you can see, I am moving the canvas around. I am keeping an eye on my composition. Uh, where, what do I want to take off? What do I want to keep on here? Uh, and 
this one actually turned out really pretty. I love, I love the way this turned out. I think the composition turned out just gorgeous. The colors are beautiful. The way that they're stretched is beautiful. Uh, and yeah, it's, it, I really, really like how this one turned out. So you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments below. Here is the wet results. Uh, that blue black underneath really is pretty that those new colors from uh, from TLP the the prey night and Waterfall gorgeous colors ball gown is one of my favorites from TLP So I had to put that in there uh, And then I really like how just having this black cell activator over top looks versus the black and gold i thought that that it just kind of cheapened it a little bit for me for me but that's just me so here we go here is the dry results uh dried really nice um i really am pleased with how just beautiful these colors turned out and the that waterfall or watercolor effect that happens uh, with this pouring medium uh, I really, really like it. So you guys, I'll have to let me know what you think. Uh, put it in the comments below. This piece is available if anybody's interested. Um, I will try and put it on my website shortly. Um, and, or if you're interested, please shoot me an email or a, um, a message on social media. So there we go. That's it. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of it on the art room wall, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again for joining, guys. Bye.